Welcome to Python 3 Advanced 3, ArgPass. In this video, we'll be looking at argument and option parsing, what it is, how to use it, and why to use it. If you've used OpPass before, ArgPass will be familiar but much less clunky. Every video have all slideshows and code available in the description. ArgPass is a standard module that comes with Python. It allows for easy and neat option and argument handling for our Python programs. ArgPass handles generating program usage, generates the help output, and handles formatting for the console. ArgPass works by interfacing with the Python system module, taking the command line arguments and assessing whether they are an option or an argument. If it's neither, it is ignored. Options are a dash and then a letter or word. Arguments usually will just be data from the user. These options and arguments come after the program in the command line. With this code example, we can see the three main lines you will see when using ArgPass. First, we create the argument parser. Then we use the method add underscore argument. Inside the add argument, we specify what type of argument it is, the help for that argument, and a type if required. There is many other attributes, but for now, let's just work with these. We then get the arguments from the parser using the parse underscore args method. All right. Positional arguments are required arguments. Arguments that are needed to make sure the program runs correctly. Positional arguments do not require a dash as it's not an option. Just like the example we just looked at, no dash is specified before the argument name num. Now that we know how the basics work, let's have a closer look as we build a quick program to test out the argpass module on. Let's create a program that outputs the nth Fibonacci number. We'll have a required positional argument num for the program to calculate to. We'll also add the help output. Okay, so let's create a file called fibn.py. So we'll come over to Ubuntu. And we'll start writing our code. So we'll do vim fibn.py. And inside, we're going to import the argpass module. So import argpass. All right. Let's define a Fibonacci uh, function. So def, we'll call it fib, and I'll take an argument n, and then we're going to have the variables a and b equal 0 and 1. And then we're going to do a for loop. So for i in range, oops, range n, we're going to a comma b equals b comma a plus b. All right, and then outside of our for loop, we're going to return a. All right, so that's our fib function defined. Let's do our main function now. So def main, and we're going to create our parser. So our parser equals argparse dot argument parser with a capital A and a capital P. And now we're going to add an argument. So we do our parser dot add underscore argument. And it's going to be a positional argument. So we just need the name of the argument. So we're going to call it num. And now we're going to write the help output. So the help for this argument is the Fibonacci number you wish to calculate. All right, so that's our help written, and it's going to be of type equals int, so it's going to be a number. All right, so we've created our argument. Now let's grab our arguments from the command line. So our args variable is going to equal the parser dot pass pass underscore args. All right, so we're going to pass the arguments from the argument parser into our args variable. All right, now let's calculate our result. So our result is going to equal the fib function that we wrote earlier, and we're going to pass in args dot num. So the num is the argument that we'd specified. All right. And then we'll print out the result. So print the, and we'll plus on 
uh, string of args dot num, and then we'll put a th. So the nth uh, fib number is, and then we'll add on the result. So the string of result. All right. So we've got our print done. Let's write out if if uh, if main. So if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main, then we're going to run main. All right. So this is our program written. Let's uh, right quit, and we'll give it a shot. So Python three fib n dot pi. And it takes an argument, but if we don't put in an argument, it'll give us the... Oop, we've got an error. Uh, module object has no... Oops, I've misspelled that. Let's open that up again. Come down here, fix that up. Argument. Right. Right, quit. So if we don't give it an uh, an at a, a um, argument, it'll give us back the usage of how to use our program. So it says fibn.py, you can either use dash h for help, and it has one positional argument, num. And we get the error, the following arguments are required, num. Alright, so let's do the dash h to see what the help output looks like. And we get the usage, the positional arguments, so we get the help, uh, the Fibonacci number you wish to calculate, and then we have what optional arguments are, which is only help at the moment. All right, so let's give it a shot. So instead of the dash h, we're going to put in a number. So let's put in, say, 10. And we get the 10th Fibonacci number is 55. Cool. And we could try something else. So we could do 5. We get the 5th Fibonacci number is 5. We could do 6. Whoop. 6. The 6th Fibonacci number is 8. Awesome. Optional arguments are just like they sound. Optional. As an example, the dash h or dash dash help option that is inbuilt into argpass is optional. You do not have to use it every time you run the program. Only when you need help. We can create as many options as we like and argpass will happily handle them. And just like the positional arguments, the help will automatically be added to the help output. In this example, we have a dash dash quiet option that will give a minimalistic output to the console. Okay, let's modify our fibn.py. It'll still take a number to output, but we'll add an option to also save the number into a text file with the dash dash output option. But you may have noticed that not many programs use the dash dash option. Instead, they have a simple dash and one character. We'll also quickly add a shortcut option to the output argument. All right, so let's come back over to Ubuntu here. And we're going to edit our file. So into our vim. And we're going to be editing our parser. So we're going to add an argument, and this argument is going to be our option. So we're going to do our parser dot add underscore argument. And this time it's an option. So we're going to use dash o as the shortcut. Whoop, dash o as the shortcut. And the actual um, parameter is going to be dash dash output. All right, so we've got our shortcut and we've got an output and now we're going to write our help. So our help will equal output result to a file. All right, and we're going to have an action and that action is going to equal store underscore true. And I'm going to split this line because it's getting a bit too long. Right, so we're going to have an action to store true, and that's going to end our our argument. All right, so now we've got an extra argument to work with. Let's put after our printout, we're going to write an if statement. So let's do if args dot output. So if the option is there and it's stored true, we're going to f equals open and we'll open up a text file called uh, fibonacci.txt and we're going to open it in append mode All right and then we're going to f dot write and we're going to write the string of 
result. And then we're going to add on a new line. So backslash n. All right. So we're going to write that out to a file. Cool. Let's save this and give it a shot. So now if we uh, do our dash h for help, oops, we get, uh, oops, uh, we want now fib n dot pi dash h. And we have the optional argument dash dash output now. So output the result to a file. All right. So let's um, do 10 again. And this time we're going to use the option O. All right. So we run it and we get the 10th Fibonacci number is 55. And now if we do an LS and we have a look in this folder, we have our Fibonacci.txt. Cool. So we can open that up. So vim uh, Fibonacci.txt. And we can see we've got the 55 that we outputted. Cool. Let's give this a clear. Mutually exclusive arguments are available with argpass with the use of a group feature. We can create mutually exclusive groups, allowing only one option to be selected, but not both. Or more. But in this example, we'll use two. It will display in the usage that the options are mutually exclusive, as well as printing out an error telling the user they can only pick one. Okay, let's modify our fibn.py again. It will still take a number to output, still have an option for outputting to a file, but we'll have a mutually exclusive group for either a verbose output or a quiet output, but not both. Argpass will tell the user off for trying to use both. All right, so let's uh, come over to Ubuntu again. And we're going to vim our fibn.py. And we're going to add in our group. So let's do it up the top here. So we're going to do a group. And that group is going to equal our parser dot add underscore mutually underscore uh Oops, mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive underscore group. Oh, that's a long one. And now with the group, the group, we're going to add underscore argument. And we're going to do a dash V argument as the shortcut. And as the full argument, it's going to be dash dash verbose. And our verbose is going to have the action equals store underscore true. All right. And we'll do another group option. Add underscore argument. And this is going to be our quiet. So dash Q, whoop, dash Q. And it's going to have the full argument of dash dash quiet. And its action is going to store true. So action equals store underscore true. All right. So now we've created our mutually exclusive group. We can start to use it. So after our result, we're going to change what prints out. So if args dot verbose then we're going to print out uh, the string that we wrote earlier however l if args dot quiet whoop, quiet then we're going to print out uh, just the result so result all right Else, if uh, there's no quiet or verbose um, specified as an option, we're going to print uh, fib, open bracket, close quotes, uh, plus the string of args.num, plus uh, right-hand bracket. So it's going to look like a function. So right in bracket equals uh, close quotes plus the string of result. And then we'll close off our print. 
So it'll print out what looks like a function and the answer. All right, so we can save this now. So we'll right quit and let's give it a shot. So Python 3 fib n dot pi. Now, if we do our dash help now and we have a look, we can see our optional arguments of uh, verbose or quiet. And underneath the usage, you can see in the square brackets, we've got dash v and we've got a big line and then a dash q. And this uh, represents mutually exclusive. So it can either be one or the other. All right, so let's give it a shot. So let's do uh, 10 and we'll do, oh, we'll do 11 this time. And we'll do dash uh, verbose. So we get the 11th Fibonacci number is 89. Similar to what we did earlier, uh, it gives us the same output. But if we do quiet this time and say we'll do 12, we get 144 and it just prints out the 144. There's no extra text with it. And of course, if we don't uh, put in any mutually exclusive option, we get the fib 12 equals 144. Cool. So if we try to add in both, so if we try to do dash Q and dash V, it'll give us an error saying that verbose is not allowed with argument uh, dash Q. Cool. That's mutual exclusion. All right. So why would we use this module? Well, ArgPass is a great way to streamline your program for professional use. It's easy to use and comes standard with Python. Saves you time by constructing help and usage. Formats the help and usage for command line output. Overall, it allows us to make dynamic changes to our program's operation by using simple options on execution. Some extra things to note about ArgPass. ArgPass does not natively support callback functions. However, you can create your own action class that implements the function call. Though it's usually easier and less time consuming to just use an if statement to check if an option was available. ArgPass also supports taking arguments into lists. This is done with the nargs attribute on the add underscore argument method. You can specify a specific number of arguments to be expected, or you can use the plus symbol to specify that you don't know how many arguments there will be. But you know that there will be at least one. Just keep in mind that these go into a Python list. A full written tutorial is available on each of ArgPass's features and can be found on the Python docs. A link will be in the description. I hope you now feel confident enough to add ArgPass to your own programs and make it more streamlined and hopefully more dynamic. Next, we're going to cover regular expressions. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.